Welcome back, everyone, to Full Circle Florida. You know how I like to work in song lyrics into my intros? And there's this great line in that old Billy Joel song, What's the Matter with the Car I'm Driving? Well, it's too expensive. That's what's the matter. And it's not just gas. This year, auto insurance went up 26% across the country. And Florida has some of the highest rates. So I went out this week to get your voice on the cost of wheels. The cost of owning a car, insurance, gas, maintenance, when does it end? Let's get your thoughts. We're talking about the cost of maintaining and owning a car these days. You want to weigh in on something? I think it's incredibly expensive. It's funny, I never sit in my car while I'm pumping gas. Pardon me, my friend. I always like to look at the numbers. It goes up, 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 up. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think the price of inflation has affected everything across the board. And I just count to 10. I'm like, yeah, it feels about right. The cost of having to do oil changes every now and then, and then your brakes, which is adds up. And then uh, I don't even remember what else there is because I don't do it all the time. <laughs> oh yeah, I just had to replace something in this truck right here. And it costs about $4,000 just for new lifters in the truck. Yeah, so it's, Everything is going up. It's crazy. My car insurance literally doubled. Thank you. What's been your experience with uh, an electric car? Is it is it easier to maintain, less expensive to maintain? Honestly, no. Um, electric cars, I think, are, are hand in hand with gasoline powered vehicles. Does it feel more expensive now than it did, I don't know, 10 years ago? Yeah, I mean, well, 10 years ago, I was in high school, so I didn't pay for anything. Now I'm feeling the cost of living right now. What are you experiencing? Uh, if anything breaks down, it's triple what it used to cost to fix it. It's it's terrible. Gas goes up and down, but everything else goes up. I can live with the gas, but when parts and stuff go up that high, it's just... Uh, Honestly, it's been a struggle, um, but with working from home, it's been a little bit manageable. Um, I, as soon as I'm done paying off this car, I'm definitely switching to electric. The maintenance, um, especially when my car messes up, uh, it could cost me anywhere from 1000 to $2,000. I do all my own repairs. Is that right? Yeah. So if something needs to be pulled off and replaced, I do that. Thanks for talking to me. Appreciate it. Take care. Drive safely. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it. That's the ticket right there. Learning how to do it yourself. Smart. All right, let's bring in our political analyst, Dr. Susan McManus. Okay, with the House flipping the seat in New York, I went back and took a look at the results since Donald Trump became the de facto leader of the Republican Party, and it's not a winning record. I mean, you look at 2018, the Democratic Party won control of the House. They gained a net total of 41 seats. Biden beat Trump in 2020. Democrats retained control of the House, gained control of the Senate, achieving the trifecta, gaining unified control of Congress and the presidency. I don't think that had been done since 2008 before that. 2022, Republicans did get the House, but they failed to produce the red wave that everyone had talked about. Democrats maintained control of the Senate and they picked up three governor seats. So is Donald Trump, Trumpism, a winning formula for the Republican Party in 2024, or like Ron DeSantis tried to warn everyone, if you keep doing the same thing again, you're going to get the same results. Well, things change, but Nikki Haley is on the same page as DeSantis. And it is interesting to look at the power of endorsements. And obviously Trump is counting on his name, carrying some of these more local kinds of races. Mm. And when you have areas that have had a, like in the case of New York, the previous occupant prior to Santos was a Democrat who ended up winning this time around. So I think a lot of the expectations are that if someone has been a president or has a big name, that whatever they say, that person should get elected. That's not the way it works. This week, Governor DeSantis held a news conference saying that these book bans have gotten out of control, which is what critics warned would happen with that parental bill uh, passed. Um, but you start to look at all the bans that Republican lawmakers in Florida have proposed over the last two years. Ban on books, ban on abortion, ban on mail-in voting, ban on social media, ban on pride flags, ban on cultivated lab meat. That's still working its way through. Ban on transgender care, ban on citizens' police review boards, which is happening right now. That's still working its way through the legislature. What happened to the free state of Florida and the idea of limited government as a Republican? Well, let's, first of all, you said some key words. It's not banning, it's restrictions. And a lot of the things you mentioned on that list, there's nine of them that you mentioned. 
some of them are already known not to likely pass either in the original form that they were introduced or not at all. And of course the Senate President Kathleen Pasadomo said some of those things are dead in her chamber which mm -hmm. means they're going nowhere. But in terms of freedom and so forth, it's very interesting. Freedom to some people in this area means something that damages someone else in their mind. That's the difficulty. But what is most interesting is Republicans have long been known for relying more on grassroots local governments, and yet they've gone far away from that in the Florida legislature. I've got a few seconds left. Biden had a bad la week last week. Uh, you didn't see him a lot this week. Can he recover from this special counsel report and get out there and interact with people? Split verdict inside the White House itself. Some say he should just uh, all go out and talk only about issues, never mention the, na the age thing. Others say, well, that the age is baked in, uh, but the bottom line is, poll this week, ABC, 86% yeah. say that Biden is too old to run, but 59% say both Biden and Trump are too old. Yeah, it certainly left its mark. Dr. McManus, thank you. Still to come, our final thoughts on the week that was and the week ahead.